Hi there, everyone. Um, so today, this is uh, my first part of many newsletters. Um, I've done a bit of a screen recording here on uh, an image that I've captured at the past. Now, what I wanted to show you is my workflow, um, you know, from start to finish. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't do much manipulation to my images at all. I tend to keep them sort of realistic. Um, all right, so, so I catalog all my images in Bridge. Um, it's just an easy sort of seamless way to get my images back into Photoshop. So I'll select this image here, um, which I recently put on my Instagram. Uh, it's at the pass in Byron Bay, so I'll just double click on that. Now this was shot with my Sony a7R2 and the 24-70mm to lens. Um, all right, so uh, start off, uh, you'll see there's a little bit of uh, <coughs> these little circles here on the right-hand side. And what that is, is that's the water droplets on the lens port. So Actually, adds to it. I like it. It's not add, add a nice effect to it. Um, in the background there, I've got stand-up paddleboarder, so it's quite a dynamic image. Two people on the wave, one guy paddling onto it there. So what I'll do is I've already um, done a little bit of color management on this now. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just send this back to default, so what the actual image was, um, and as shot for the white balance. <clears throat> All right, so you can see there it's a little bit dark. So obviously... In that instance, I'll do will adjust the exposure, so I won't do it too much because I don't want this area over here to sort of blow out. Also, it's a little bit, the shadows, I'm, I'm not happy, so I'll just bump the shadows up a little bit. Um, whites, I might even bring those up a little bit just to give the image a little bit of vibrancy. Um, clarity, I don't tend to touch too much. It, it makes the image fall apart quite easily, so, and by me saying falling apart, it means to have um, noise occur throughout the image. Um, vibrance, I tend not to use that too much. I go into more detail with, uh, with vibrancy um, by using color management system inside of Photoshop, so I don't actually use it in the raw area here. Um, so I'll put that back on to zero. All right, and also here you'll see, you know, the temperature isn't exactly the way you'd want it, or I wouldn't want it anyway. So over here, we've got a color droplet. This is the color, the, the temperature tool, and it's a droplet. So what I want to do is place that droplet onto something sort of as white, the whitest area I can find. If I do it here, it won't allow me to do it. it the, the area is too bright, and you'll get here. Clicked area is too bright, so unclick that. So I'll try and move it up to this area here. And just click, okay, great. All right, so it's brought, it's brought the blues back where I wanted them to be, and also the magenta, it's bumped that up a little bit. So. What I'll do is I'll just get the temperature and I'll warm it up as to sort of get that afternoon glow, okay? So that's pretty much all I'll do there. Okay, so everything's sort of quite simple. And we go into this area here. This is the, um, the, the linear curve. This allows me to sort of click on any the part of the curve that I want to adjust. So down the bottom here is your shadows. So as you can see there, the shadows are darkening and lightening. I wanted to sort of make this image a little bit lighter, so what I'll do is I'll bump the shadow exposure up a little bit, and I'll grab up here, this is the highlight, this is the other part of the curve, the highlight part of the curve. If you tend to go, you know, too much down or too much up, it'll start to have that HDR look, and it will look, you know, it looks kind of funky, I don't like it. Um, so I'll just leave that just above the middle line there, just for this image in particular. And the shadows is a little bit too bright there, so I'll bring those in a little bit. Okay, um, next tab across here is the sharpening tab. So this is a really good feature uh, in the RAW. It, it keeps your image um, pretty stable. It doesn't tend to uh, deteriorate as much as if you were to sharpen it as a photo inside of Photoshop. So it's always good to sharpen inside the RAW. So we'll just bump that up. I tend not to go any more than 50. Um, and then it's very important to, as you can see here, I've shot this in an ISO 800. Um, your noise reduction, the luminance part of it, I always add a little bit to that, especially if I'm shooting over ISO 400. Um, and the best way to sort of see the artifacts working inside of Photoshop is to actually zoom in around about 100%. So we'll just go in here, 100%, and have a look and see how how the noise is looking through the shadows here. You'll see there's a little bit of noise. Um, probably take that up a little bit. 
to tell you the truth, I wouldn't. And as soon as you, if you, as soon as you start taking this noise reduction up too much, the image becomes softer. All right. So I'm pretty happy with what I've done here in in the raw part of the Photoshop. I don't tend to do too much more. Um, you can go in and do the lens correction. I really don't see the point of it. Um, it, do, it really doesn't make much of a difference. As you can see, it's taking the vignetting out of the out of the corners. Um, but in this particular image, I, I, I like that. I like to be able to have that sort of center part as a focal point. All right, so then we go into open image. There we go. So this will open up in Photoshop. Um, perfect. And then I'll just make the screen a little bit bigger. Still retain. Okay, perfect. Let's drag this out. All right, so there we are here. So we're in the Photoshop area, and it does get quite uh, very complicated. It, it, it is a quite advanced program, Photoshop. Uh, a lot of my students, I do recommend to start on Lightroom um, as, as sort of a, a kickoff. But um, the end part of it is Photoshop is, for me anyway, um, the ultimate sort of tool to get my images from the camera to print. Okay, so there's a few. Down this here, there's a few little um, tabs that I do use, and this one here is the spot, um, sort of a, um, it's a band-aid tool. It allows me to get those spots out of the image, um, you know, dust spots, or, you know, if there's something down there that I don't want that's sort of obscuring the image a little bit, say this person here is cut off um, halfway through, and I go, well, you know, I don't need that. This is, this is how good this tool is. So I just wave this magic wand, <laughs> so to speak, over top of my subject and there it goes all right so it is possible to do that and you'll see sometimes if you've got a dirty sensor um, there will be some artifacts especially you'll notice them in the sky um, my sensor looks pretty clean I also shot this at f7 so I don't oh here we go yep we've got one just here so it's very faint but you can click on that it just disappears all right, so uh, there's not much else um, spot-wise that I want to get rid of on this image. Um, the next uh, the next tool that I'd want to use would be, I guess, the dodge tool. Uh, now, the dodge tool um, allows me to sort of highlight certain aspects of my image. So I, you can go to the you can highlight the highlights, you can highlight the midtones, all the shadows. I never highlight the shadows; it's very um, destructive to the image. But I will. Um, highlight midtones and highlights. In this instance, it's quite a bright image already. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just make sure that uh, the exposure is on around about four percent. I never go higher than ten percent. Um, it is a very uh, aggressive tool when you're using it. You'll notice things happen very quickly. So I'll just go on there. They're quite a, very minor adjustments, and they're very hard to see as you're doing it. But if I go in now and um, go back to my history, just up top right here. I can just show you, you know, it just makes a little bit of a difference. It just brings that your image to life, that little bit extra. Okay, so once I've done that, um, I will then go into my color management part of the program. So uh, once again, this is, you know, the, the adjustments are quite a very um, small. They're not large adjustments. Um, the more adjustments you make, the and more unrealistic the image will become. So in this image here, we've got a lot of yellows and reds. So what I tend to do is I'll grab the magenta slider and I'll just move that around. And that's then I know sort of that's the most aggressive color when you, you're dealing with, with red. So I can see that the, the area that will be affected once I start using all the other sliders here. So what I might do is I might add it. At the moment, it's a little bit green through there. Um, and I just want to add a little bit more yellow through to it. Um, might even take the cyan down a little bit just to warm it up a little bit, take the blues out, and then take the, add a little bit of yellow as well. Then I'll go down to the next color, which is yellow. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go to the magenta and I'll just have a look. Okay. So you can see as soon as I start taking magenta out, it'll go green. And as soon as I start adding magenta, it'll go quite red. So I'll just... Um, Put that about plus 13. I'll just take the blue, just see what that does. 
and I won't take any of the blue out. Yellow, will I add yellow just a little bit? I'll keep that at about 20. All right, the sky looks pretty good. Um, we've still retained the, the blue in the sky, but I'll just jump on the cyan and see if I can add a little bit more. Um, if you take the yellow out of um, any of the blues, it actually gives it a quite a really good blue hue. Um, I'll just add some black to that. So there's not much going on there. It's quite a faint blue. I don't think we're gonna get much out of that. So press OK. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks now. I'll just check the levels. Um, as you can see here, the highlight, that's the highlight on the right hand side. And why is that so peaked? Because we've got a lot of sun there and a lot of brightness. So that's natural. Um, over here, you can see there's a, quite a gap between the shadows and the corner of that. So if we drag that over there, it'll darken the image and I don't want it to. It, it, general consensus on, on Photoshop is if the levels if there's a gap between that space and the part of the histogram, is to bring the slider over. But you know, if I do that, it looks too contrasty. I'm not happy with that, so I'll leave I'll leave that over on the side there. Um, so everything's looking quite good here. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you know, you can go in and, and you can choose a curve layer um, and give it a, a little bit more brightness if you want to, just to give it you know a little bit more life. Um, then you can get the brush tool. Make sure that's on, say, 40%, 30 to 40%. You can see I'm going over things quite quickly here. Um, if you want to learn more about this stuff, you can join me on my workshops. Um, and I go over a lot of this, a lot of this stuff when, when we're doing the theory um, part of it, just after our practical. So we will um, go through and critique our images after the practical. Um, my next workshop will be, I'm hoping, June. Um, to just keep, uh, just I'll keep you guys posted on my Instagram and my other newsletters that do come out. So, um, what I've done there, I've just lightened this this part of the image here, and uh, I've 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 then taken the brush tool and just brushed back over the sky. Um, I'll turn that layer off and on so you can see. There we go. So done. Alrighty. Well, that's pretty much it. I will flatten that layer there. And then what I generally do, once, once I'm happy with an image and I do want to catalog it, I will go into Save As and put it on my hard drive. I'll I save it as a TIFF file. It's a very good non-destructive file to save it under. Uh, and then I'll name it uh, Surfers Byron Bay. Um, and that one was uh, what, six. So that'll be the 4th of May I took that. 2017. All right. Well, thanks guys for your patience and concentration on this one. If you've got any questions, um, feel free to email me at info at craigparry.com.au and I'll hopefully be able to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, enjoy your day and uh, thanks for listening.